Hi everyone! I thought I'd do a video about books and see what kind of response I get to it. I normally include it in my favorites, but I've been forgetting lately. So let's see if this interests many people. Uh, before I forget, I update my book blog much more regularly than I do Goodreads. Goodreads I'm lucky to update like once a month, if that. But my book blog is lisforliterature.blogspot.com. So if you don't follow me out there, please do because then you'll be able to get all of the reviews as I go. And plus I love hearing comments on the books of if you've read them, of what you've thought of them. And speaking of which, leave comments below of what good books you've read this year because I am very interested for myself and I'm sure the other readers that are watching this would also like to see. I'm going to go through these very quickly but hopefully I'll give you enough of a synopsis without spoiling the plot that you will know if you're interested in any of these books. So I have 10 books for you. I started off the year in my um, murder mystery kind of phase and the first book I have is Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. It starts with Libby Day and when she was seven her mother and two sisters were murdered. It was called The Satan Sacrifice and her 15 year old brother was convicted of the crime. 25 years later this kill club, fans of the Libby Day or the Satan Sacrifice murders, contacts her to try to free her brother Ben. She is in a very sad place and she's looking to profit by talking to them and helping them. It was very fun, easy read, even though it's a dark topic. I really did enjoy it though. Two books by Elena Ferrante, My Brilliant Friend and The Story of a New Name. These are the first two in her Neapolitan series. She is not a fun, happy, upbeat writer, but she is brilliant. Her prose is amazing. She captures so much of the characters of Italy. These are set in 1950s Italy and it starts off with these two girls, Lila and Alana, and they are friends. And they have a love-hate relationship and the first book covers their childhood and then the second book is into their 20s when one gets married and one goes to school. Like I said, just eloquent phrasing, beautifully written. I will read more even though she's not upbeat. I just love her writing. The House of Special Purpose by John Boyne. This is part love story, part historical epic, part tragedy. It is uh, Georgie is in his 80s and his beloved wife Zoya is dying of cancer. So he starts flashing back to around the turn of the century when he was a teenager and it tells how he went from being the teenage son of a poor farmer to the bodyguard of the Tsar. I really enjoyed this. I thought it was good writing, good character development. There was some far-fetched parts, but as long as you could just go with the story, I thought that it was really worthwhile. The Expatriates by Janice Y.K. Lee. This is one that I didn't rate as high as I think I should have and going to my book club when we reviewed this again gave me that perspective because I look back and I'm like, I really enjoyed that book. It is the story of three women, Margaret, Hillary and Mercy, who happen to be living in Hong Kong. Each of them have life-altering events that happen. They're both very lonely and these life-altering events are very impactful, <laughs> obviously, if they're life-altering. <laughs> um, it was very entertaining, it captured the expat life, and I just found it was really good and it made an excellent book club discussion. If you're looking for mystery and something along those lines, the Chelsea Kane series, I've read the first two, Heartsick and Sweetheart. Um, Gretchen Lowell is sort of like a, the killer in The Silence of the Lambs, and Archie Sheridan is sort of like the Jodie Foster character in Silence of the Lambs. And she captures him and tortures him for 10 days and instead of killing him she mysteriously decides to let him go. The second book is her being captured. It's a very good well-written mystery when I first started it. I don't generally care for mysteries and I didn't think I was gonna like it. I absolutely loved it. It has great twists, great character development and I love that it was set in Oregon. Front Lines by Michael Grant. This is set in World War II and the premise is that women are subject to the draft right alongside the men. It starts off with three different women in their hometowns, farming towns in the 40s, and gets you to know kind of their family life before they either enlist or are drafted. The first part felt very sweet and quaint, which I imagine their lives maybe were back in the 40s, but I think it was also a good juxtaposition for after they went to battle, you felt 
the trauma, the reason why soldiers don't talk about things. It was very vivid and disturbing, and I thought it was an extremely well done book. It's being compared to Codename Verity, which is one I read two years ago, three years ago, that I really enjoyed as well. This is Your Life, Harriet Chance. This is a light, easy read. It's a woman in her 80s, and it bounces around, kind of like a show that was called This Is Your Life. Um, and it goes from present day back, various events, and even though it's light, it captures so much. Some of the messages for me were like, even though there were secrets, disappointments, and learning to come to terms with the past, that most of the things that you travel over are inconsequential or work themselves out in one way or another. Um, I just thought that it was something that, especially as more mature women or men, that you could appreciate some of the things that Harriet had gone through, and I thought it was very well done. And finally, Glory Over Everything by Kathleen Grissom. I would also throw her first book in this, which is The Kitchen House. You don't have to read The Kitchen House. This is a standalone book, but the main character of this book was a minor character in The Kitchen House, and you would understand some of where he's come from if you do read The Kitchen House first. Both are excellent. Glory Over Everything, the main character is Jamie, and he is a master of a house with black servants, and all of a sudden Henry shows up on his doorstep, a black man, and he is asking Jamie for his help to find his son, Pan, who they feel has been kidnapped into slavery. I won't give away too much, but it goes back and it shares why Henry and Jamie know each other, why Henry feels that Jamie would help him, and the various secrets and things that have unfolded to get Jamie to where he is. Very well done. I felt like it captured a lot of that era. I really like Kathleen Grissom's book. This is only her second one, and I can't wait for her third one. So those are the 10 highlights of books for, that I've read so far this year. Please share below any great books that you've been reading lately this year, and I'm sure myself and everyone else will like to see that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this, and we'll talk to you next time.